Hello everybody and welcome back to my Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy Let's Play. Let's continue, shall we? Professor Kiryakin? Yes? My name's John Cunningham. We spoke on the phone. I'm a journalist, and I'm gathering information for an article I'm writing about the Mayan religion. Ah, yes, I've been waiting for you, young man. <laughs> what, um, what paper did you say you write for once again? I work for a new magazine called History and Culture. Curious. I've never heard of it. It's, uh, it's curious, but your face seems familiar to me. Have we met somewhere before? Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, I guess I must have one of those boring faces everybody sees everywhere. Well then, let's uh, have a go at it. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Can you tell me anything about Kweknitlan? Of course. Come, I'll introduce you. You see before you the ancient Mayan god Kweknitlan, the serpent with the two heads. One head sees in this reality, the second in the other world. By opening both mouths, the Mayan oracles could see through the serpent into the other world. Could you explain this other world? Or the world beyond our own, the kingdom of the gods and the dead. The Mayans believed that human sacrifices allowed them to hear the voices of the deceased and see into the future. What exactly do we know about these oracles? Oh, not very much. <laughs> they were very mysterious. They served as mystic liaisons, allowing man to connect with supernatural forces. If we can believe the ancient texts, the oracles possessed strange powers. What kind of powers did the oracles possess? Some passages mention a supernatural life force, permitting the oracle to live for several hundred years. Tell me, how did the sacrificial ceremony work? Come, I'll show you. This painting, dating from the first century BC, shows a sacrificial ceremony. Victim's agony must have lasted quite some time. The priority being to keep the mouths open as long as possible. The victim was stabbed three times, each wound cutting a pulmonary artery leading to the heart. The Oracle is not the one stabbing the victim? Oh, the Oracle must never soil himself with the blood of another. That is why he chooses a sort of proxy, another person in the crowd, totally at random. This person becomes the Executor. The Oracle takes complete control of the Executor, manipulating him from a distance. A Mayan sacrifice. That's what it was. You aren't a journalist, are you? Who are you? My name is Lucas Kane. The police are looking for me about a murder that I did not commit, but I was the executor. You're a murderer? I'm innocent. I stabbed someone I'd never seen before three times, cutting his arteries, just like you described. 
Do you mean to say that there is a Mayan Oracle still living today? But, but that's completely impossible. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Oh, it's the symbol of Quetnitlan. The Executors cut this into their own forearms before accomplishing this sacrifice. So, it is true. My God, the Codex was right. The Codex? What are you talking about, Professor? You can't stay here. Your picture is in the paper that the security guard is reading. He's sure to recognize you. Come, let's leave here. And I'll tell you all about it. Not to be nitpicky about the uh, dialogue there, but I'm pretty sure Executor and Executor are two different things, Lucas. Anyway. Thank you for your help, Professor. Professor! The Codex speaks of the coming of a child, a prophet, the answer to all of life's questions. The Oracle kills to find the child. forward to meeting you. Few men are capable of resisting an oracle. What is there so different about you? The chroma. You have the chroma. So that explains it. How did you ever acquire such a power? No matter. What matters is, the time has come for you to die. Why me? Why choose me? Pure chance. The executor is always taken from the crowd. It's a great honor for you to be chosen to serve Quetnitlan. The Chroma? What does that mean? The force that created the universe. The origin of everything. It gives extraordinary powers to those who possess it. Enough talk. Other matters await my attention. We will see each other again. In the other world. Gibin Dinakwen Daune.
Agatha? But how... Listen closely, Lucas. Those who employ the Oracle are searching for a little girl. A perfectly pure soul that's never been incarnated. Her coming was foretold by the most ancient prophecy in human history. She's the one you see in your dreams. You must find her before the Oracle does and put her someplace safe. Hurry, there isn't much time and they are already back on your trail. I must inform you that we are unhappy. Very unhappy. He has escaped you again. First in the museum lot. A big mistake, the museum lot. And then in the wave. What's worse, you showed yourself openly to him. And all for nothing. It's just... I was unaware of certain factors, my lords. Which factors? He possesses the Chroma. That's impossible. Idiocy! How could he possess the Chroma? I know not, but it is a certainty that he does. This is how he resisted my psychic attacks and successfully evaded the police. This could force us to change our plans. This is serious, very serious. That is not all. Someone has intervened. What do you mean? While you were with him in the wave? Yes, my lord. Someone brushed aside all of my attacks on Kane and protected him. It was not one of ours. Certainly not. No. I think it was something else. Its chroma was... different. Another clan? That's impossible. Only we are left. We have a rival. Who searches for the Indigo child as we do. They must not find the child. That would be a catastrophe. A disaster. Kane is on their side. Unless they are just using him. He is the key. He sees through our eyes. He must not find the child. You must deal with this problem. Definitively. I have already taken measures. He will be definitively dealt with. And soon. Do not disappoint us. You may leave us. to lose. I've got to warn him or he's dead. We should wait, Carla. Backup will be here any minute now. No way. This time I'm gonna get him. That desk guy swore to us that he was in his room and he's not gonna get away. I hope that guy didn't screw up when he said he recognized Kane's photo from the papers. He looked so blind he wouldn't recognize his own mother in a phone booth. We'll find the answer in room 369. Time to phone the brother and then get the hell out of here. Pick up, Marcus, pick up. Hello, my son. I'll be with you in just a minute. I just need to answer the telephone. Marcus, he's in the church. Don't let him get anywhere near you. Lucas? Is that you, Lucas? What's going on? I don't have time to explain, Marcus. Run, right now. Shut the doors and lock them tight. I'm begging you, just, just do what I say. Oh, come now, Lucas. Just do it, now! In. Now, can you explain what's going on? Call the police, and don't come out until they get there. 
Lucas? Three, six, nine. Here it is. Nobody go! Either he's gone through some changes since the photo, or this is not him. Shit! What the hell happened? Calm down, girl. I think there's been a slight misunderstanding. Tyler, it was the wrong room! Huh? There must be another room 369 down the hall somewhere. Well, that was awkward. I think the bird has flown the coop. I'm gonna find him, Tyler. I promise you. Come on, let's go. And suddenly, Lucas is Spider-Man.
for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!